Emotional Intelligence by Daniel Goleman. Now, here's the thing. Most people believe that success in life is directly correlated to their intelligence level or their IQ. But is that true? Unfortunately, not. Here's the thing. We actually need emotional intelligence in order to be able to harness the most out of our raw intellectual horsepower. So this book really teaches us how to do that, how to use our emotional intelligence in order to get the very best out of ourselves, how to manage our emotions, how to harness the power of our emotions, and how to work with others. Some key fundamental skills in life in order to be able to do our very best. Now, emotional intelligence has five components as per research by Peter Solovey. So we're going to focus on those five key components, and then we're going to also talk about 10 specific actionable ideas on how to actually apply emotional intelligence in life, how to actually get the benefits of emotional intelligence, how to develop emotional intelligence, 10 ideas on how to develop emotional intelligence. We're going to talk about that after we kind of break down the five components of emotional intelligence right here. All right, so here it is. The first component of emotional intelligence is what's called self-awareness or metacognition. Now, self-awareness in some ways is the basis, the fundamental of emotional intelligence. It's about being able to know one's emotions and to recognize your feelings and your emotions Because the truth is, if you can't really notice your feelings, if you can't really understand your emotions, you are at the mercy of those feelings. Uh, A psychologist named John Mayer, he said, self-awareness means being aware of both our mood and our thoughts about that mood. As in, we're we're able to think about our thinking. We're able to think about our mood. That's self-awareness. So we have to be able to identify and name the emotions we're feeling. We have to be able to um, understand what emotion I'm feeling any given moment. This is the fundamental skill in emotional intelligence. This is the skill on which everything else is built in the world of emotional intelligence. Every other emotional intelligence skills is kind of... um, using the skills involved in the basics of self-awareness and metacognition. And the key here, and this almost goes to meditation now, the key is when we are able to identify and name the emotions we're feeling without being reactive, without being judgmental, that's when we truly have metacognition. That's when we truly have self-awareness. Because what happens is as soon as we're able to identify and name the emotion we're feeling, our neocortex or the language part of the brain, the prefrontal cortex gets involved. It needs to get involved. And in order to be able to observe the emotion, be able to name the emotion. And as soon as we do that, now we have gotten away from the grip of the amygdala, the lizard part of the brain that's only thinking about fight or flight. And that gets activated in face of really charged emotions in some ways. So all of self-awareness and metacognition really boils down to us being able to rise above the experience and a meta level of consciousness, being, being aware of the experience as it is happening, rather than being completely immersed in that experience, not being able to rise above that experience. And... Uh, This is in some ways, as I talked about, this is the essence of mindfulness meditation, a meta level of awareness, developing that metacognition, being able to see your emotions and being able to experience that emotions without judgment, without being reactive. All right, so that was the first component of emotional intelligence. The second component of emotional intelligence is our ability to manage those emotions. So first we identify those emotions, we observe those emotions, and now we have to be able to manage those emotions, right? Especially the ones that are charged emotions, negatively charged emotions. The key is the ability to handle emotions, not to suppress emotions so actively, not to numb emotions. That's the other thing. It's not about numbing all the negative emotions and just feeling positive emotions, not at all. As Aristotle said, the key is to have emotions appropriate to the circumstance, not too much, not too little, not to numb negative emotions and only feel positive emotions. It's not actually possible to do that. If we, we cannot selectively numb our emotions, we have to be able to feel both. So we have to develop the ability to diffuse the challenging emotions, to feel the emotions and let them be, to not let them run our lives. There are a lot of specific things we can do to manage our emotions and we're going to talk about that 
in the 10 specific actionable ideas on developing emotional intelligence. So stay tuned for those specific actionable ideas. Now, the other component of emotional intelligence, the third component of emotional intelligence is self-motivation, harnessing the power of your emotions. Now, here's the thing. Being able to use your emotions in order to get the goal you desire is crucial. It's crucial. That is really important. In fact, that is a key to high performance in the highest of pursuits, being able to uh, use your emotions in face of obstacles and challenges to be enthusiastic and persistent even when things are hard. That is a requirement to give your very best. Because emotions, when they are out of control, especially negative emotions, when they're out of control, they can literally bring us down. But if we can learn to manage them and harness them, we can truly motivate ourselves. If you had two different people who had very similar mental capacities, however, one of them was severely limited by their emotions because they could not handle their emotions while the other one was able to use their emotions to give their very best in their pursuits. Who would you bet your money on? Who would give their very best? Who would be the winner? Of course, you know, the person who can use those emotions to bring out the very best from their mental capacities. That's the one who's going to win. So our job is to be able to harness the most out of our mental capacities using our emotions. Now, there's a lot of uh, talk about how stress is bad for you and how stress should be totally avoided, but that's not truly the case. And let me explain that by what's called the Yerk starts on curve. Actually, our performance tends to go up with a little bit of stress, we can actually perform better. In fact, there's a peak performance zone where we give our very best when the stress is a little bit at the medium level. Too much stress will impede our performance, but too little stress can lead to envy and boredom. Now, here's the thing. While some people have a very small stress profile, some people can have a very large stress profile. So in this graph, we have on the y-axis is performance and on the x-axis is stress. And if you look at this, it is like an inverted U. So the uh, your performance kind of goes up as the stress level goes up, up till a certain point, and then it kind of peaks out at a certain stress level, and then it starts to diminish, right? However, different people have dif different stress profiles. So while some people might uh, actually start to go down when the stress level gets uh, to a certain level, other people actually might start peaking at that level. Other people might have a much wider stress profile in the sense they can handle a lot more stress and still give their very best, while some people might be able to handle very little stress and only then can they give their very best. The key is for you to be able to understand where you are in the stress zone, to be able to tune yourself so that you are constantly able to give your very best under the highest level of stress or under a very wide level of stress. That is the key, to be able to give high performance at various different levels of stress. That is emotional intelligence at its best. And this is a research by Yerkes Dotson. That's, it's called the Yerkes Dotson stress curve, stress performance curve. Highly recommend you check that out. So realize we can improve our performance even under stress levels if we know how to be emotionally intelligent. Now, I want to dig a little more into how to manage, how to self-motivate, how to harness the power of our emotions. And not only that, show you some actual tests that show how important the power of controlling our emotions, of managing our emotions is. And the first of those tests is called the Marshmallow Test by Walter Mischel. Now, Marshmallow Test was something that was conducted back in 1960s. This was a large-scale experiment they conducted of four-year-old kids. Uh, and the researcher offered each of these kids one marshmallow. However, they said, if you don't eat this marshmallow for 20 minutes, we'll give you another marshmallow. Now, as you can expect, some kids couldn't wait and to just ate the first marshmallow while some kids waited for the second marshmallow. And, for, and the researchers actually followed these kids for 14 years. And then 14 years later, they looked at their SAT scores. The kids who could not wait for second marshmallow, their average SAT score was 1,052, while the kids who waited for second marshmallow, who were able to delay gratification, who were able to control impulses, their score was 1,262. So almost 20% higher than kids who did not have impulse control or self-control. And that is literally... Um, as you can see, 20% is a huge number just by having that ability to delay gratification, just by having that impulse control. 
huge uh, advantage these kids had and these kids went on to become much more successful they were much more socially adjusted and they had much better people relationships and all that stuff so you might be wondering how you can develop impulse control how you can develop this uh, self-control and willpower well there are quite a few great books on these topics willpower by roy boymeister willpower instinct by kelly mcgonigal and we have full summaries of these books in our 2x mental toughness program where we summarize where i've summarized 60 of the greatest books on uh, building self-confidence building self-esteem building mental toughness building willpower all those different aspects of of, uh, building mental toughness 60 book summaries are completely in this package and you can check it out by go to 2000books.com slash tough there's over 15 plus hours of um, video summaries of book summaries in there so check it out all right so we just talked about impulse control and the importance of imp impulse control in uh, uh, in 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 getting the best out of ourselves in performing at our very best in life another key another key to self motivation is understanding optimism is to be able to harness the power of optimism and in his book martin seligman talks about the definition of optimism optimists are by definition the people who seem who see the reason for failure as within their control when they fail they feel like everything is within their control and they can make things happen. While pessimists, on the other hand, they see reason for failure as something that is fixed and cannot be changed, whether that reason is inside them or outside of them. They just think that they cannot make uh, it any better and something must be wrong with them. And hence, that's why they continue to fail or struggle. So realize that optimists are the ones who are always seeing that they can make something happen, that they can make life happen and that's what that's the skill we need to learn when it comes to overall self-motivation and harnessing the power of our emotions when we become optimists we know we can uh, make things happen we can influence things and optimism can be learned there's we can develop certain self-efficacy in order to build our optimism another great uh, way to harness the best, to harness the most out of ourselves, hard to, uh, to use the power of emotions, to get into what's called the flow zone, also known as the zone. Also, zone might be, flow actually might be the peak of exercising your emotional intelligence because when you get into flow zones, when you get into that flow, you are literally performing at your highest level. You are harnessing the power of all your emotions at the highest level. Now, what exactly is flow? Flow is that point in time flow is that uh, that time when you are utterly absorbed in a task and nothing at ma else matters and you're paying completely uh, complete attention to that task and it requires you to give your very best you're right at the edge of your competence you're not really concerned about how well you're performing it's like playing a sport you're trying to give your very best that's why playing sports or even playing video games is so much fun because you're constantly in flow you are just enjoying the moment as it is you are focused you focus all your attention on a very specific task you have a very well defined goal you have very specific boundaries and the demand for the task is right up at your level of competence or right above it that's why it's really fun to play sports with someone who's at a very similar level to you but if someone is very high with someone is way more advanced than you then you quickly lose interest because you are unable to meet the demands however if someone is at a very low level compared to you even then you don't enjoy the game so you have to be at that level where the challenge is just for just right for you in that moment just at your highest level that's when you get into the flow zone that's when you enjoy your very best so realize being able to find flow experiences and being able to harness them is crucial it's it's a great skill to have to be able to get into flow and to be able to harness the power of flow because that's when you are actually performing at your very best it's the peak of emotional intelligence as daniel goldman talks about and the book flow by mihaya chicks and mihaya talks about this in great detail all right, so we talked about three key components of uh, emotional intelligence so far. Self-awareness, metacognition num being number one. Second being managing emotions. The third being self-motivation and harnessing the power of emotions. The fourth uh, pillar, the fourth component of emotional intelligence is empathy. And empathy is just simply speaking, recognizing emotions in others. It builds on the first 
component of emotional intelligence, but it is self-awareness. The more we understand our emotions, the more we can read and feel them in others. And all of rapport actually starts with empathy. And research has now shown that empathy is actually, empathy is a very powerful thing and it, it helps us become more popular, more outgoing, more sensitive, build better relationships with the opposite sex. And there's a lot of other great benefits of having empathy in life. All right, the fifth component of emotional intelligence is handling relationships. The key is being able to manage emotions in others. And in order to be able to manage emotions in others, we need two master skills, manage to be able to manage our own emotions and to have empathy for others. We have to be able to tune into other people's emotions and we have to be able to drive their emotional state. We have to be able to bring others into our emotional realm. And when we can set the tone, the emotional tone of the interaction, that's when we win. The most powerful person is the one who has, who sets the tone of the emotional interaction. And here's the key. Even though you want to be able to uh, set the emotional tone and to be able to read people and to be able to tune into people, you don't want to become a social chameleon. You instead want to be able to act in alignment with your values and feelings to be able to do the right thing no matter what. Right, And one of the greatest books ever written on how to build relationships, how to handle relationships is How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. And I have a beautiful animation summary of that book here um, linked up here as well. So when you download this mind map, uh, make sure to click on this uh, video and watch this video. By the way, I highly recommend this. You get this mind map for free. You can get it by going to 2000books.com slash self or go to the i button in the top right corner to get this mind map. And the key to this mind map, why it's so powerful is because you have access to all these ideas instantly. You will have access to all those actionable ideas to be able to practice emotional intelligence right away at your finger types. You can just click on them and see those ideas, right? All right, so we just talked about the five components of emotional intelligence, self-awareness, managing emotions, self-motivation, empathy, and handling relationships. Now let's talk about specific actionable ideas on how to develop emotional intelligence, on how to be able to harness all of these components of emotional intelligence. All right, so the first actionable idea is mindfulness meditation. Now, Mindfulness meditation has so many scientifically proven benefits that are exactly related to emotional intelligence. Let me just read out some of them. So mindfulness meditation, these are the scientifically proven benefits. It helps reduce anxiety, depression, stress, nervousness. Not only that, it helps improve self-awareness, awareness of emotions, metacognition, pain tolerance, impulse control, optimism, grit, compassion, self-compassion, performance under pressure, brain performance. There are over 900 studies that I have found that literally talk about meditation and how powerful it, uh, that is, and especially mindfulness meditation. And I want to make sure that you are doing mindfulness meditation. So make sure to download my guided meditation audio. I've been meditating for 20 years and what I have put together for you is a really simple 15-minute guided mindfulness meditation audio. You can just go to 2000books.com slash meditate and download that meditation audio and start meditating right now, right now. So you can just press play on the meditation audio, sit down and meditate every single day. And also I'll send you a few emails about how to meditate the right way. It's like a mini course on meditation. So hopefully you enjoy it. All right. Um, Again, as I said, meditation is the ultimate power strategy when it comes to developing emotional intelligence because it kind of touches on all the different five components of emotional intelligence. If there's one thing, one actionable idea, one specific thing you can do to develop emotional intelligence, it is mindfulness meditation. Another great exercise and rather simple one is to just write down the emotion you're feeling when you're feeling a strong emotion, write down the emotion as it pops up in your brain. Just the act of naming that emotion, being able to write it down, diffuses the power of that emotion in your amygdala, in your lizard brain, because your language center gets engaged, your prefrontal cortex now gets engaged as soon as you have to give a name, as soon as you have to define that thing. And not only that, when you start writing down those emotions, you will develop an emotional voc vocabulary and you develop your self-awareness. All right, the third actionable idea is cognitive behavioral therapy. Now, we talk about a lot of cognitive behavioral therapy in the book Feeling Good by Dr. David Burns. Actually, cognitive behavioral therapy is one of the most powerful ways 
to uh, help treat depression. So I highly recommend this book for anyone who's struggling with a lot of negative challenges and negative thoughts. Uh, this book will really help you. We have included this uh, book, uh, Feeling Good, in our 2X Mental Toughness program where we have other 60 books summaries on self-confidence, self-esteem, building mental toughness and all those things. So check it out at 2000books.com slash tough. Now I'm going to give you a quick overview, a four-step overview of cognitive behavioral therapy. Of course, I go into a lot more detail, around 20 minutes of details on how to actually do cognitive behavioral therapy when we do this book summary. So first of all, you're going to notice that you are having some challenging emotion. Maybe it's depression, maybe your anxiety or whatever it is. Then you're going to ask yourself, what thought, what specific thought is leading to that emotion? It's not the situation, but what's the thought about that situation that's leading to that event, that emotion? What thought is leading to that emotion? The event is leading to a thought which is leading to emotion. What's the thought, right? Now you're going to ask yourself, what is the distortion in your thoughts? And no matter how good you think you are in terms of your thinking, and you might think that you have no distortion, there are actually 10 commonly known cognitive distortions that cause these negative emotions. And these distortions are usually the root cause of all these challenging emotions. And you can uh, get the list of all those distortions when you get the summary of this book, Feeling Good in our Mental Toughness Program. So you have all these uh, cognitive distortion that cause these challenging emotions inside of you, once you, under, uh, once you understand that these are the distortions, now you can actually respond to this, respond to this negative thought to yourself. So you can actually f uh, have a dialogue with this distorted thinking. You can rationally respond to your own distorted thoughts because you can see the cognitive distortion in your thinking. You can see that you are just globalizing something or you're just making everything, uh, you're t making a mountain of a molehill or you're taking one little experience and extrapolating it. There are so many different cognitive distortions that are out there. These are just some examples of those. So this was a really simple outline of cognitive behavioral therapy. We talk about that in a lot more great detail in the summary of the book, Feeling Good, in our 2X Mental Toughness program. So check that out. All right. The fourth actionable idea is to change your physiology. One of my favorite ways, actually, because changing your physiology literally changes your biochemistry. Just standing in a powerful position will increase your dominance hormones and reduce your stress hormones. Dominance hormone being testosterone, stress hormone being cortisol. And in the book, Unlimited Power, Tony Robbins talks about the power of physiology and the words and the pictures you're holding in your mind and how that actually affects your emotional state. And I actually did a video on how I walked on 10 feet of red hot burning coal just by using these techniques, by, the, by harnessing the power of physiology, the words, and the pictures, I was able to do that. And I have a video of that on our channel. I'll make sure to link it up here as well. And we have the complete summary of Unlimited Power in our 2X Mental Toughness program. Now, here's another power hack, a really simple power hack. Whenever you're feeling depressed, stressed, fearful, nervous, anxious, just stand up. Stand up in a powerful, in a power pose like a Superman, occupying a lot of space. Maybe spread your hands in the air or maybe put your hands right by your waist and stand up in that power pose for two minutes. What will happen is, again, the same thing. Your testosterone goes up, your cortisol goes down, and now suddenly you start to change your biochemistry and you are feeling different. And in the book Presence, Dr. Amy Cuddy actually talks about this in great detail, how this actually works. And of course, we covered that book as well in our Mental Toughness program. So check that out. And one of my favorite hacks, along with these uh, power body language hacks, is simply changing your biochem, changing your physiology to go walking or running. That itself will shake you out of a mood. When you, I am feeling like I'm in a funk, and when I'm feeling a little down, I go for a run. And if I go for a run for 30 minutes or 45 minutes to an, for an hour, I'll suddenly forget about that down mood and I will be in a completely new state. Um, the changing of that physiology will completely change my biochemistry and I'm a new person. That's one of my favorite ways to dominate my negative emotions in some ways. All right, by the way, make sure you download this mind map for free because you can literally get access to all these ideas at your fingertips any given moment. And to order to download this mind map, all you have to do is click on the I button here at the top right corner of the screen or just go to 2000books.com slash self and you can download this mind map. So make sure to get this mind map, okay? All right, the next actionable idea is deep breathing. Now, this is a very simple exercise. When you are stressed out, when you are nervous, use this one, okay? Breathe in 
using this pattern. Breathe. You are you're going to be breathing in, in this pattern just for maybe 10 breaths, maybe for a minute, and suddenly you will be able to see a difference in your emotional state. So what you're going to do is you're going to inhale to the count of four, hold your breath to the count of four, and exhale to the count of eight with your mouth open. So let me just do it with you. Inhale to the count of four. Hold to the count of four. And now exhale to the count of eight. That's it. And you repeat this pattern for 10 breaths. What that does is it gives control back to your prefrontal cortex away from your amygdala and you're back to being centered again. So a really powerful exercise, really simple exercise. If you just do it for one minute, you will get control back, especially when you're angry. Try to do this. Try to do this deep breathing pattern for just 10 breaths. Inhale, hold, exhale. Make sure the exhale is at least twice as long as your inhale because that's when it really cools you down in some ways. Really simple uh, hack. It's actually been proven, this simple breathing pattern has been proven to reduce your blood pressure as well. So a very powerful breathing pattern here. All right, the next actionable idea is to architect a small win. When you are feeling unmotivated, lazy, lethargic, sad, or in a funk, you assign yourself a small task. Even write it on a small piece of paper, and then when you complete it, cross it off from the piece of paper. It'll give you an emotional boost. It'll give you a sense of completion, a sense of victory, and then you're ready to take on a bigger challenge. I, I use this quite often, especially when I'm feeling like I'm in a funk. I will assign myself a small task, arrange this task, or a small task like uh, do the dishes, or small task like uh, arrange the bedroom. Anything like that, I'll assign myself the task, and then I'm going to complete it. Even if it takes just five minutes, once I complete it, I cross it off from the piece of paper, and I feel good. I feel that I've uh, I've accomplished something, and now I can go and accomplish bigger victories. So architect a small win, a great way to get yourself out of a funk. Another great actionable idea is to help others in need. One of the most powerful ones in the book, Upside of Stress, Dr. Kelly McGonigal talks about how uh, they did research studies and found that mortality rate goes down by 33% if we spend time on a weekly basis helping others in need. Of course, we covered this book uh, in detail in our Mental Toughness program, so check it out at 2000books.com slash tough. Another book, How to Stop Worrying and Start Living. Uh, it's one of the, uh, Dale Carnegie talks about the idea of how helping others in need is one of the greatest ways to change your own moods for the better, how that itself will stop all the worry and help you enjoy your life. And I have a complete video of this book of how to stop worrying and start living and the eight best ideas from it. And it's, it's right here. So you can click on this video when you get this mind map and you'll be able to watch this video. So help others in need. All right, number eight in the list of actionable ideas to build emotional intelligence is empathy exercise. Now this is really simple. Try to read other people's emotions by just watching their nonverbals. And you'll be surprised how accurate you can be when you start to develop this practice. Develop this practice of reading their face, reading their eyes, reading their smile, reading their the way their hands are, reading the way they're sitting, reading the way they're standing, reading the way um, they're walking. All of those over time, as you do this again and again, you will develop the ability to to watch people's nonverbals and realize what emotions they're feeling. When I went to a Tony Robbins seminar called Unleash the Power Within, one of the exercises he made us do was split us up into pairs of two, let's say person A and person B. And person A was asked to enact, to, to go into a specific emotional state, whatever they want. And person B was supposed to figure out what emotional state person A was in. And usually one of the best ways to do that was to start to actually adopt the same specific physical state that person A was in. If person B were to adopt that physical state, they would certainly start to feel that emotion. And that's the key. To be able to just be able to feel people's emotions, to be able to understand people's emotions just by watching them is a very powerful uh, strength you can develop. And it's a very powerful uh, key to develop your emotional intelligence, right? It develops empathy. Another actionable exercise is to reframe. Now, reframing is a very powerful way to handle any negative uh, negative 
thoughts or feelings you have about a situation, no matter how difficult the situation, if you ask yourself, how will this situation turn out to my advantage and why is this good for me? Now you're reframing that to something positive. And you can even reframe your past failures, how that specific failure helped you move forward, how it made a positive impact in your life. And in the book, Awaken the Giant Within, Tony Robbins talks about a lot of specific reframes, different kinds of remades, reframes. And we, of course, summarize the whole book in our Mental Toughness program. Check it out at 2000books.com slash tough. Another great reframe is to realize that the obstacle that's standing in the way is the way forward. And there's a whole book by that name called Obstacle is the Way by Ryan Holiday. Um, which it says, um, the one of the most powerful quotes in the book is, by, is from Marcus Aurelius, the great Stoic philosopher. He said, the impediment to action advances action. What stands in the way becomes the way. He's literally reframing the impediment as something that advances action. He's reframing what's standing in the way, the obstacle in the way, is the way forward. A great book, by the way, to check it out. And it's also in our Mental Toughness program. We summarize the book in there as well. So check it out. All right. Another and probably the last actionable idea we are going to talk about is how, not what. When the words from people are in conflict with how they're saying them, you have to trust how they're saying rather than what they're saying. You have to trust their body language, their tonality, their gestures, their voice. As you might have heard, 93% of communication is nonverbal, and that's actually true. We have to trust the nonverbals, not the words that are coming out of their mouth. So don't trust what they said. Trust how they said it. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned a lot about emotional intelligence from this video. Make sure to get this mind map for free. Click right here to get this mind map or go to 2000books.com slash self to get the mind map. And if you haven't yet subscribed to our channel, make sure to do so by clicking right here. We have a lot of great book summaries on personal development and also book summaries on business and entrepreneurship. So you're gonna enjoy a lot of uh, learning a lot of these great ideas on our channel. So make sure to subscribe. All right, guys, see you next time. Bye-bye.